The Fire Brothers are back together, Fire Nation, for an incredible audio masterclass on how to coach yourself to your dream life and then coach others to theirs. It's going to be an amazing, amazing audio masterclass. We're going to be going through a five-step process that you can use to achieve your wildest dreams, Fire Nation. And who's my fire brother? Well, it's Nick Unsworth. He's a high-performance coach, international speaker, and best-selling author, and the CEO of lifeonfire.com. His mission is to help you love what you do for work and relentlessly pursue your passions and live your dream. And fire Fire Nation, if you're listening to this before December 6th of 2018, myself and Nick will be rocking the stage at the Life on Fire event in San Diego and best news ever. If you're one of the first 50 action takers, you can get a free ticket to this event while they last by visiting lifeonfireevent.com slash JLD. If you're not one of the first 50 Fire Nation, believe me, this will be of amazing value. So still come and hang out. I can't wait to see you there. And we're going to dive into this amazing audio masterclass when we get back from thanking our sponsor. You and I both know hiring quality candidates isn't easy, but there's a place where hiring is so simple and smart. Zip Recruiter. Post your job with one click, then Zip Recruiter does the work for you. Their powerful matching technology scans millions of resumes across this network of hundreds of job boards to find the right people for your job and then actively invites them to apply. So you get qualified candidates fast. And right now you can try Zip Recruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to ziprecruiter.com slash fire. That's ziprecruiter.com slash fire. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. So Nick, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something interesting about yourself that most people don't know. What's up, Fire Nation? <laughs> so so excited to be back. Yes. And I, I figured I was, I was just going to go next level on, on answering this question. And if anyone can top it, I, I would be shocked. So something that most people don't know about me, I sat the wrong direction on the toilet up until my sophomore year in high school. <laughs> what a visual. <laughs> try not to judge me, Fire Nation. Do not try not to judge me. Didn't you have to like take your pants off every single time you did that? Yeah, because if you're facing the wrong direction on the toilet, there's no way to get your pants off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, unless you have your your legs over, you know, up, up above your head, you know? So yeah, it, it was a process, and that's how I discovered it was I was frustrated with why, you know, it was uh, – so it took forever to take your pants off to do a number two, and then people were like, what on earth are you talking about? And then it came out, and it was the most terrifying experience of my life. I swore them to secrecy. And now I'm actually shedding light on an area of my life where there was a lot of darkness. Unbelievable. Well, Fire Nation, what a way to kick off this episode with Mr. Nick Unsworth, who used to live two floors below me for a few years out in Pacific Beach, San Diego. I mean, those are the good years. We lived on a beautiful bay and just a beautiful building. And uh, we had some great times out there. Now I'm bringing him here today to talk about how you, Fire Nation, can coach yourself to your dream life and then coach others to theirs. It's going to be an amazing one-two punch, one-two punch, because Nick, you are a great person to talk about this because you've coached now over 3,000 entrepreneurs and you've certified 253 coaches and counting. So what's the number one problem that they face? What I hear time and time again is, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. And what that looks like is overwhelm. It looks like for very successful people, they have lots of options. They've got so much opportunity that they don't know how to put it together. They don't know how to take all those puzzle pieces and put it all together into one beautiful picture. Or it's someone who's just getting started. You know, John, hey, I've been watching or listening to Fire Nation for, you know, for years, but I'm stuck. Where do I start? Mm. You know, so that that's what comes up a lot. I'm stuck. I mean, Fire Nation, and guess what? We all need to get unstuck at some point. I mean, that's why I personally have a coach. That's why I'm part of a mastermind, because along your journey, you're going to have that happen. So that's why it's critical to invest in ourselves, time, 
money and the right people and the right masterminds because that is how you're going to continue to up level your game every step of the way. And what I love about you, Nick, is you've always been a process driven entrepreneur. I've learned a lot from that. I've applied a lot of those learnings actually to my own business, which has been sweet. And you have a killer five-step process that Fire Nation can actually use to achieve not just their dreams, but their wildest dreams. And those five steps, vision, declaration, letter, resource up, and faith over fear. So let's break those down one by one. Let's start with vision. All right. So, so vision, what I have found is that when someone's stuck, it's because of a lack of vision. And so they can't see the big, exciting future. And so whether it's being in debt or whether it's, you know, just coming out of a breakup, like think health, wealth, love, faith, even like different areas of your life, when we're in a a season of discomfort or, you know, really tough circumstance, it feels like the world is crashing in around us. It feels like, you know, how am I going to get through this? I've got that tax bill or I've got debt or whatever that thing is, or shoot for people that are very successful. It might be they're making a lot of money, maybe that uh, everything is supposed to be good, but there's still that gnawing, nagging feeling on the inside of why don't I feel deeply fulfilled? Why don't I have this like childlike sense of joy on the inside? Like what do I have to do to be freaking happy? Like look at very successful people and athletes. It's like, shoot, you know, I was just talking to, to a, a, a Super Bowl champion and about his self-hatred as he won a Super Bowl, as he, you know, has been on the cover of magazines and did all these amazing things, but still on the inside was stuck and it's, and didn't have this joy on the inside. So vision is what can help you break through that. And vision is something that, you know, I've got a couple specific details I'll dive into to help you see a future that is so fun and so exciting where, you know, you find that you're getting out of bed before the alarm clock gets up, you know, goes off your, you know, you're like JLD, you're running on that bay when we used to live together. <laughs> you know, I look out the window, I'm, I, I'm an early riser. I'm getting out of bed at 6am and I see this guy jogging. He's like on his way back. <laughs> <laughs> it's the difference of just being excited about life. We call it inspired action. When you have a very clear, specific vision for your life, you end up living in this inspired action where it's fun. And so um, one of the ways to get to that to that point and to that place is, you know, to really take a few moments to think about your life and to think about what is it that you want. And, you know, John, isn't it funny? Like if you ask someone what they want, like some of the things that people come up with, it's crazy. Like a lot of people don't know what they want. Have you experienced that just in your coaching things that you do? Dude, I've asked people that question and it's like they're a deer in headlights. They're terrified. And I'm like, wow, these people haven't even thought about what they want. Is it shocking that they haven't achieved it? It's crazy. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, it's like, that's what I love with all the, that you do with your journals. It's like just the act of getting clear. It's like, if we can't see it and then we therefore can't speak about it, then there's, I mean, there's just no hope to go out and get it. And so we're just that rudderless ship in this big ocean. And so when you think about what is it that you want, I love to look at, you know, in the next six months, like what are some tangible things that you want? Um, how do we also get there as a strategy? I call the three S's, which is what's your background story? And you just literally, you just write down a timeline. So just draw a line on a piece of paper and you just jot down significant, significant events positive, negative events, things that have happened to you, things that you've done, accomplished. And you're just looking to see how, what emotions come up as you jot those events down. Then the next S is your stance. And all that means is, and I'll never forget when my first coach asked me this, she said, you know, Nick, what's your stance? What pisses you off? What's the movement that you're starting? And it's a really powerful set of questions. Because if you think about your life and you just for just for in this moment, like what comes up for you, what pisses you off? What is your stance? What are you here to do? And just by the way that that question is phrased is from a lot of people, it goes from it being about them to being about other people. And so when we get past cars, when we get past just money, when we think about building a business that makes an impact, when we think about helping other people. And it might relate to your story that that's where vision starts to become more exciting. It starts to become more fulfilling. And then the third S is strategy where you build out a plan to execute it. So 
I'll give one quick example on how you put these together. Um, so we have a woman named Tracy Sacon. And John, did you ever meet Tracy? No, I don't think that? so. Okay. So she she sat down and she's like, all right, Nick, she just hired me to coach her. She's like, I want to double my income. I've got this insurance agency. So her insurance agency, the reason why she had been doing insurance for 15 years is because she lost a family member and the insurance person came to the door with a check. That check made a huge impact in her life and her family's life, and it helped them through the grieving process and all these things. So she grew up to want to be an insurance agent. So her stance at that time was she wanted to protect families in the way that her family had been protected, right? So her strategy was, I'll be an insurance agent. So fast forward, she hires me thinking that she wants to double her income. I sit down with her. I go through vision. I go through her story. I find out in her story that she has a child that was diagnosed with autism. So as she starts talking about it, I see her very passionate, the emotions and talking about how she laid her life down and surrendered everything that she had, time, money, resources. And she brought him through all these different treatment processes and different treatment centers and got him almost entirely off the spectrum to the point where he's living a normal life and you wouldn't even know that he has autism, right? So like, so I look at that And I said, okay, Tracy, if you won the lottery right now and you, and it didn't, and money didn't matter, like think publishers clearing house instead of five grand a week (laughs) forever, like a hundred grand a week forever, you can't possibly spend it all right. Like what would you do with your time? And in that moment, all of a sudden she started dreaming. And all of a sudden, vision kicked in, and her God-given assignment kicked in. All of a sudden, she said, you know what I would do, Nick? I would start an autism treatment center, and I'd go out and I would build a facility with four floors, and each floor would be the different modality that I did with my son, and I would make a difference. And then it would not only make a difference with the kids, but it would make a difference with the families that, that all surround those children with autism. And then we would go coast to coast, and I look at her, and I said, Tracy... So why don't you do that? (laughs) You can imagine. She's like, but, 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 you know, all these fears came up and I got the yeah, buts, yeah, but, yeah, but. And she's just like, you know, I'm an insurance agent. I don't know how to lead a company like that. I don't know how to start a nonprofit. And I just said, hold on, time out. But what if you had all the money in the world? Let's just play with that thought. Would you do it? And she, again, was so excited. And so what happened was she literally used this whole five-step process. So that became her vision. She publicly declared it. She got a tattoo of a date as to when she was going to build that facility what? on her wrist. <laughs> she wrote a letter. She resourced up, hired coaches, Faith Over Fear. And that thing is kicking off 2019 like she said it would. Boom. Wow. I mean, Fire Nation, if that doesn't give you just a little chills, I mean, the act of getting a tattoo on your wrist of the date, that's <laughs> accountability. And a few things that I want to go back through over Vision Fire Nation, ask yourself this, why don't you feel deeply fulfilled? If you're not currently fe- feeling deeply fulfilled, why is that? And where did that childlike joy go? I mean, where did it go? Like, it was there when we were kids, somehow we lost it along the way. And by the way, You can get it back because it is there and it's right there. You just have to be focused on that. And I really just want to go through a couple things that I love that you said, Nick, which was, are you on a rudderless ship? I mean, Fire Nation, just if you are, you don't have to tell anybody else. You don't have to admit it to the world right now, but admit it to yourself. If you are on a rudderless ship, if you know you were to be asked that question, you know, what is your story? What is your stance? What is your strategy? How would you answer those things? And again, those three S's that I just named, story, stance, strategy, they need to be part of your world, period. And Nick... I'm going to, you know, you've been pretty open with us so far today, especially with your interesting thing. So I'm going to be open with Fire Nation about you. I hope I'm not taking too many liberties here. But, you know, when I met you, this was a long time ago. This was late 2013. You know, you were single. You were, mm-hmm. let's say you were a little pudgy. Like, you know, you're never overboard, but you were a little pudgy. You were drifting mm-hmm. in some areas of life. And by the way, nothing's wrong with any of those things. <laughs> Nothing. But you were very clear on some declarations. And I remember you and I sat down, we had some incredible evening chats together and you were very clear and you declared what you wanted and things are quite different for you now. So why don't you kind of go through this second part of this five part series, which is declaration. Absolutely. So, so just like Tracy did with the three S's, you know, I, um, I got clear 
that I wanted to build and sell a company, and I did that. I went back to my mentor. I got clear. I wanted to, you know, make an impact, and I started Life on Fire. Went back to the mentor, and this is where you know JLD, where you're picking yeah. up at 2013, is is okay. So Nick, you've you've got the business that you love. You're making impact. You feel that fulfillment on the inside. Well, what do you want now? And notice the simplicity of that. It's just, what do you want now? You know what I said to my mentor, Michael, is I want to be engaged. I want to find the love of my life. I want to get married. I want to have kids. All these things that I had dreamed about as a little kid. And so at the time, I was single. I was on Match.com. I was on Tinder. I was doing all these things to find love. And uh, and it wasn't working. I mean, I got catfished. I've been a little bit vulnerable on this episode. Google catfish if you're curious, Fire Nation. We won't talk about it now. It's a little crazy. <laughs> a man showed up and it's supposed to be a woman. And <laughs> it, what happened is like, I just said, you know, this is what I want. I want to find love. And he asked me a very important question. He said, why don't you have it now? And you know what popped up? This is called a limiting belief. This is the first thing that popped up. And I said, because all the good ones are taken Ooh, by now. What? And and this is also that piece is, you know, and what's so important with vision is vision of what you want, but it's also vision of what you, uh, of what's getting in the way. So he helped shine light on limiting beliefs. And that belief, it's not real. It's not um, anything that I, you know, think is true, but that's what came up. All the good ones are taken. So he helped me get clear on what I wanted. He helped me declare what I wanted. And then we worked on those limiting beliefs together as well. So the declaration in step number two is it's a formal announcement. And what happens is that when you declare what you will achieve, when you declare your vision. So in this case, I declared on a stage in front of 350 people. I said, the next time that you see me at this event next year, I will be engaged to the love of my life. And I said it, I put a date to it. So the declaration, what's also key about it is having a date to it. So if you don't put a date to it, it's Parkinson's law as John, I know that you talk about this is if you don't put a date to it, your task is going to expand or contract depending what the date is. If you don't put a date, well, no wonder why people don't get their vision. No wonder why that they don't find love. And I have dozens of clients that have done the same thing with the declaration and declared when that they would meet their soulmate and it's happened. And so because what, what, what goes on subconsciously is everything I had to learn how to be a, a more confident man. I had to learn how to get rid of these limiting beliefs. And I had to become the person who could attract the woman that I really wanted to meet. Because when I made my declaration, I mean, I went, I went for it all. I was like, she's going to be the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. She's going to have dark hair, green eyes, like a fitness model physique. I mean, if you're going to talk about vision for business or personal, whatever that is, why go small, right? Like anything is possible. And so I just laid out like the most impressive, <laughs> the most amazing woman I could possibly dream of. And I got so clear in that declaration, I shared it from stage. And what it does is creates accountability and it also um, attracts resources. So when you declare something that you will accomplish, if you were to post that on Facebook or share it in front of other people, the more that you speak about your vision and declare it, it's like inflating life into it and your words have power. And so what's crazy is I attracted a relationship coach. I ended up, people came up to me and said, Hey, I can help you with that. I can help you with that. So if you keep your vision a secret, no one will come up to you and say, I can help you with that. So that is the, the, the big piece of the declaration is accountability creates leverage, attracts resources. So Fire Nation, I was there when Nick declared that from stage. And at that point, he had not met his current love of his life. And so I was like, wow, that's a pretty bold declaration. I mean, he's got 364 days and counting right now to make that happen. And then I'm not sure exactly how long it was later from that, but I remember getting a, a phone call from Nick and he sounded a little nervous on the phone. Again, I lived just two floors up from him. He's like, he's like, John, um, so I met this girl and I, I really like her and she's coming over. I kind of, what I decided to do was she sells uh, these these smoothies that like really help you over the course of a few days, uh, you know, lose some weight. And of course, you know, that's one of my things I want to do. But more importantly, like I actually just want to meet this girl again and to, to say hi to her and to get to know her a little bit better. So she's coming over in like 20 minutes. Can you come down here? I don't want to be here alone. I feel like a loser. So I remember going downstairs. She came over, delivered the drinks. And I was just like, hey, she's like, hey. And I was like, oh my God, this is exactly who Nick described from stage. Like however many weeks or months ago it was. It was crazy, dude. It was crazy. And it's so funny. It's hilarious that you, <laughs> I, 
I, I forgot that that detail. I remember the, the drink. The like I, t- I took a drink of the beet juice and like. Yes, like- <laughs> yes. I actually I think I have the video. And so what was so cool is like when I met. So so what happened was I made the declaration. I just basically I realized that when I made the declaration and wrote out who I wanted to meet, that I personally had to grow into being the man that could attract that right that kind of a woman and so i did i did the work you know i dropped pounds and all these things and cool you know got myself to that place and then sure enough i end up meeting her it's a really crazy cool miraculous story that happened and one of the things is once i met her, met her on tinder of all places um that here i am buying juice so i could meet her in person and so when John, when you met her, I was buying a second round of juice because I'm like, all right, I'm going to seal this deal. I'm right. going to not only personally buy the juice to meet her. And then the second time she came over was for her to bring another round of juice to give it to John, John oh, being an influencer. And I'm it. like, here we go. Like, I'm like, I'm going to add so much. I'm like, I'm going to meet her. I'm going to yes. add value. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Oh man. That was years ago. You worked. My, my wingman. Brother. Here it is, right here. Love it. Well, I can still be your wingman all the way down here in Puerto Rico. And Fire Nation, I hope you enjoyed that little walk down memory lane because it's important to recognize that this stuff is real. This stuff works. Nick's done it. I've done it. Successful entrepreneurs do it, period. And Nick, let's move on to number three, which is letter. Yeah. So the letter is a visualization exercise that is designed to reprogram your unconscious mind. So when we think of conscious mind, this is your thoughts, this is your inner critic, and you know there's uh, all the conversations that happen in our mind. So as I'm talking, you might be making assessments, you might be like thinking of, of the conversation, or there's just, we have this constant chatter, right? And so for the majority of people, human beings, the majority of that conversation is negative. And what's really cool is that we get to change the conversation. We get to change beliefs that have been given to us, downloaded to us, imprinted upon us as children. So from zero to seven years old, psychologists call it the imprint period. In that period, that's when your belief system is formed. And so that's why some people, you know, you hear about people winning the lottery, right? Like they win the lottery, but why do they end up back where they started financially? Or athletes, they make all this money. But then once they're retired, they somehow squander it all and they're back to where they're where they're at. So it comes down to their their actual belief system. And so for entrepreneurs, you know, that's why there's that sabotage or people that can't break six figures or they can't break seven figures. And and um and so one of these things that I've learned through years of per- personal development and training coaches is We actually, through our conversation, through our language, and through repetition and consistency, you can shift and change those beliefs, and you can reframe them and reprogram. You can update your software, right? So we do it at live events, um, and this exercise with the letter is something that you can do daily. And so you get clear on what you want in your vision publicly declare what you will accomplish, right? If you can declare on Facebook, or, or that's even better because it's there's more accountability. Then with the letter is you're writing it out as if it's already been accomplished. So my letter with Megan Ann, before I knew who she was, right? So I was single, I had been going on these crazy dates, but that letter to myself was describing within 12 months what it would feel like proposing to the love of my life what it would feel like waking up next to her, what it would feel like, you know, um, just the first time that I saw her, you know, and, and just, and just mapped out all these emotions. And so in your letter, you actually write it as if it's already accomplished. So it's from your future self. And so what happens is as you visualize and as you write it with emotion and, and then by reading it every single day, what happens is your unconscious mind does not know the difference between pretend and reality. So when I'd come home from a date that was a disaster and it was like the wrong person and I would come home and then all of a sudden, you know, those limiting beliefs pop up that I'm never going to find love or all the good ones are taken or all these, these nasty, nasty, negative thoughts, right? I would read the letter and in that moment, it's like I would be in this state of like joy and just, you know, like euphoria thinking about, you know what? My soulmate is out there. Like she's out there. She's waiting for me. It's going to happen. And so in that moment, what's happening is that you're believing that it's possible. And through repetition, what ends up happening is you're breaking down all that negative chatter, breaking it down. And so sure enough, over the year, 
I ended up meeting Megan, proposing, all happened within a year. And that letter, some people are like, oh, it's just a letter. And it's like, we've had so many clients that live life and they use the letter. And then when clients don't, it's actually obvious to me and our coaching team who's not using their letter because of what's showing up in their life and wow. what's happening and where where they're at and staying stuck. You're probably like, you're not using their letter. They're, they're like, yes, I am. You're like, no, you're not. They're like, <laughs> you're right, I'm not. <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> that, that conversation has definitely happened. <laughs> Fire Nation, one phrase that Nick used that I loved is your conscious mind does not know the difference between pretend and reality. So just remember that when you're going through this process. And if you think Nick's been dropping firebombs, well, of course he has. He's life on fire. But we got more coming up when we get back from thanking our sponsor. Fire Nation, I'm here with Ian Siegel, the CEO of Zip Recruiter. And Ian, I've heard some employers struggle with getting enough qualified candidates to choose from. Do you have any suggestions for them? Well, every month, ZipRecruiter gets hundreds of thousands of jobs directly posted to our website. And as a result of that, we have a lot of data on what works and what doesn't work. And one of the really interesting things we uncovered is that the way you describe the requirements for your job will directly impact how many candidates you get, and in particular, the gender of the candidates who apply to your jobs. We have discovered a set of what we'd call gender-biased keywords that will heavily influence which gender decides to apply or not. Examples of this would include, do you say, I need ambitious go-getters who are willing to hard charge? If you use those as your descriptors, you're going to get a lot of men. Do you say, we have a nurturing environment on our customer support team? If you use those words, you're going to get a lot of women. You want to be thoughtful about using gender neutral terms to maximize the candidate pool that you get and to get a nice balance between men and women applying. Fire Nation, now these are actionable tips. And ask yourself, are you being mindful about the language you use in your posts? If you're paying money for a job post, you want to make sure you're making the most of it and cast the widest net possible. So heed the advice of experts to optimize what you put out there. Once your job description is optimized, ZipRecruiter scans millions of job seeker profiles and resumes on ZipRecruiter and across this network of over 100 job boards to find the right candidates and actively invite them to apply. As applications come in, ZipRecruiter analyzes each one and spotlights the top candidates so you never miss a great match. It's no wonder ZipRecruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S. based on Trustpilot ratings of hiring sites with over a thousand reviews. And right now, Fire Nation, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash F-I-R-E, ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. ZipRecruiter, the smartest web way to hire. So Nick, this next point I'm pretty interested about because it's resource up. And we're going to be talking about something that can literally guarantee you will achieve your dreams. And I don't like to be figurative. I like to be literal. So let's resource up, brother. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, you know, resourcing up what is so interesting is that there's so many people entrepreneurs, people that want to start a business. And it's like, everyone's looking for like the hack, right? Like this growth hack, this life hack, this, give me the shortcut. Um, people are thinking about like, you know, funnels or ads and all these techniques and stuff. And what's so crazy is that the overarching hack, the shortcut is that in anything that you want in life, no matter what your vision is, there is always a way to resource up. And, and, and to resource up powerfully in a way that you can literally ensure and in most cases even guarantee that you achieve it. So, for example, if you want to be a top podcaster, well, what do you do? Find a way. John doesn't even do private coaching, but find a way to pay this guy enough money to get the mentorship, <laughs> get in podcaster's paradise, right? Like do what you need to do to learn from someone who's done it. So whatever your vision is, it, it's very liberating once I realized this, that there's always a person a tool, there's something out there that I can just find. And even if you don't have the money for it, right? Like if you don't have the cash to reason, like people say, oh, it's easy for you, Mr. Nick and life on fire. And you know, it's easy for you and John, but like, it wasn't always easy. Heck no. Yeah. I mean, it's like when I was 50 grand in debt and I failed at 11 different businesses. And what happened was it was in that moment when I wrote a letter, I made a declaration. I told everyone that I knew 
that I was going to build and sell a company in two years. I tattooed a flipping goal in my chest <laughs> that I was going to build and sell a company in two years, which people are like, you're nuts. You fail at 11. And I said, I can, I will watch me. I'm going to do it. And from taking those actions, what happened was people started talking and people came to me and they're like, Hey dude, I heard that you were going to, you know, build and sell a company or Hey, and, and, the, the resource actually found me because I was talking about my vision. And so all these people said, you've got to go out and hire this guy, Evan Pagan. He helps people build and sell companies. So what do I do? I find him online. I watch this video sales letter for 90 minutes. And I was so flipping enrolled. It was 5,000 bucks for an event. And I'm like, problem. I don't have 5,000 bucks. I, I'm 50 grand in the hole. You know, I, for the first time in my life, I'm not sure how I'm gonna gonna pay bills, and I've never been late on a payment in my life. And and it's not about your resources; it's about your ability as an entrepreneur to become resourceful. And I got resourceful. I had a friend go in on halves with it. You know, as we were quote business partners, I called up Discover and I said, "Listen, I've been with you for ten years, and I'm asking for you lift that credit line, twenty five hundred bucks, and and you, you we'll be good. <laughs> we'll get you all that money back." <laughs> And I had to borrow the money to get there and thank God that I did. I mean, I get there, I'm eating protein mix that I brought with me from in a sandwich bag and people are doing lunch and I'm making these little shakes in the hotel sink and I was struggling and broke. But you know what? That coach unlocked me because sometimes with vision, you can you can work and answer questions until, until your wrist feels like it's going to fall off <laughs> so and true. you can think about your vision forever. But sometimes it takes a coach to see your life and see things differently. You can't see the forest through the trees. It's like if you have a label and it's a sticker on your forehead and you can't see it, sometimes it's a coach that sees it. And this dude literally shared with me what my vision was for the next few years. And from that, I came back, I sold the company. Right when I said I would, I resourced up, sold the company in two years, achieved that goal. Thank God, right, with that tattoo on the chest or else John <laughs> right. would have made fun of me for the rest of my life for sure. <laughs> And, and did it. And so what resource do you need? What, and what's the resource that you've been wanting to get, but you're like, ah, oh, the money. And if the money stops you, that's playing a small game. You know, what's crazy, no matter how much it is. And it's like, I, if you've been needing podcasters paradise, or if you've been needing to hire a coach, like how many years are you going to go kicking the can, right? Like life is brief. And we only get one shot and it's like, don't squander your opportunity or let the, the days just kind of roll by. I mean, who do you need to, what do you need to do to resource up? You know, and that can be anything from sell something, right? If you have a car, a third car, sell that. If you have, shoot, I've seen people that have been sitting on stocks that are doing nothing but collecting what a couple to a few percent of interest and instead They'll cash out stock. They'll go and sell something. They'll go and be creative. They'll get a loan from a family member and then they'll get the resource, the coach, the mentor, go to an event and come back and create hundreds, if not millions of dollars in revenue as a result of that. Now question, have you stayed faithful to discover all these years for them giving you that $2,500 lift? <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, shoot, discover, there's no way I, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be doing this. I'd have a job and I'd be pissed off that I never went for my dreams. Well, Discover, thank you for lifting that and giving Nick the 2,500 he needed to unlock everything he's unlocked over the past 5, 10, 15 years. It's been absolutely amazing. And the key point that I want to make sure you get Fire Nation is resources will find you. I mean, people are terrified about where do I find this? Where do I find that? How do I become unstuck? Listen, if you resource up, those resources will find you. And Nick, let's move into faith over fear. What do you got for us there? All right. So faith over fear is all about how do you respond when life throws you the lemons, right? So, you know, the bigger your vision the bigger that you're going, the more that you're just, you know, ringing out all the potential that you have on the inside. It's like, you've got to expect you're going to get, you know, met with resistance. It's like, if you go to an event and you co and you've got a clear vision and you declare it and you come back, it might be a spouse. It might be a, a, a best friend. It might be other people telling you're crazy. I mean, 
you've got to expect that you're going to be met with resistance. And so oftentimes, the bigger the vision, the bigger the resistance. And so faith over fear is just, it's just a way of being. It's a way of being and a way of life that when you're met with that fear about, should I do this? Am I good enough? You know, do I deserve this? Am I worthy? Like about getting started. And it's just choosing to drop into personal belief and faith. And, um, and then every single time that something comes up where you question things, right? So when you take a step in a new business, whether it's podcast or being a coach or whatever that is, that is, or going to the next level, hiring employees, growing from a, from a million to 10, like there will be those moments where you question everything and is the knee jerk reaction constantly going into fear. And then that happens. And then you're, you're, you feel stuck and paralyzed from that for hours or days Or can you instantly recognize the difference and discern between the two and stay in that place of faith? Now, for me, I have just gotten super close with God. I also take it a step further. This is optional, not for for everybody, not to push anything, but for those that believe in God, this is where it's like you lean into his word, you lean in to trust the God-given assignment on your life. Fire Nation, faith over fear. Faith over fear. I mean, if you're going to choose one of the two, either be being fearful or having some faith, it's just a no-brainer. And I can say one thing that I was a little fearful about, Nick, um, and I just had to go with faith on this one, was when I decided to make the move to Puerto Rico. I mean, here I was in San Diego, yep. living in a beautiful place. You know, you were my neighbor. We had a great community. Life was good. I mean, there are so many unbelievable location independent, successful, fun, motivational entrepreneurs in San Diego. It's just a great place to be an entrepreneur, but I knew that my business to take the next step really needed to be in Puerto Rico for a number of reasons we're not going to get into now, but I just knew it was the right move for me at that moment in time. So community was something I I just really knew I was going to lose at first, and I I was desperate to find it when I got here. I can say, you know, fasting forward a little bit, like fortunately, I found that community here, and I'm so grateful for that, but that was a big concern of mine because community, Fire Nation, is everything. Mm -hmm. And if you don't currently have your community, you need to find your community. And I'm not talking about your buddies from high school, you know, who are all sitting around complaining about not getting that raise or working an extra hour, not getting comp. No, not those type of people, people who are going to up level. Like I said, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. That's how I end every episode. There's a reason for that. You need to find your community. And if your community like isn't where you are right now, that's where and why events are key to your success. So Nick, you have thrown a ton of events. You have brought so many people together. You are responsible for marriages and babies. Like it's crazy how amazing your events have been. I've been at a bunch and uh, we got a little cool announcement coming up, Fire Nation, about something else uh, right on this line too. But Nick, talk to us about this. Talk about events. Yeah. So events, when I think about the biggest breakthroughs in my life, and then also for clients, oftentimes the common denominator is that they're happening at events. And when you look at it and it's like, well, why, why is that? And it's exactly everything that you've been saying, John is, is it's community. And so at an event, you can, you can put email aside, right? You can put family aside for a minute and really just get filled up with vision, get filled up with courage and boldness where you're in this state of mind where anything really is possible. Because when we're at work or we're grinding, it's like we actually, the lid in our container is way lower. And so being at an event is like being on the top of a mountain. It's just, we, you're, you're bold, you're in a peak state and you're around other people that are raising the bar, raising the lid. And so it's at events that breakthrough happens. And I know for me, when I, when I look at my life, thank God that I borrowed the money to get to that event. And then from there built and sold a company. Thank God I went and got another mentor and then started life on fire. And in every single year I go to events and it radically changes and, and it changes my life and grows who I am. And therefore it just became a big part of my mission is that with life on fire is that to put on world-class events so that we can build community and we can help people just have a level of boldness and of faith to go and to really clarify and stretch their vision on their life. And then most importantly is not just have the vision, but to also break through what are these things that some people are not even aware of that are holding them back. It's like running through life with these parachutes on your back And for some people, they know they're there. They know what their vice is. They know what's holding them back. They know it's money or this or that. But for other people, there's like invisible ones 
in addition to the ones that you can see. And so you come to an event like ours, our life and fire event, and you get there and we create that atmosphere where it's about vision, breakthrough, and then literally it's like John Lee Doom is coming by with these big <laughs> lawn trimmer scissors to, pff, just cutting these parachutes off people's backs because that's the thing is that it takes a breakthrough. It takes a peak emotional experience to shift someone where they go from average to excellent, you know, and and they, and they have a complete breakthrough where they shift their life. That's Tracy Sacon. And for her, instead of being the insurance agent, it's being the leader of this movement for autism, right? And it's stuff that is so big and world changing. And so events change people's lives. And that's why we love, love doing them. Well, I want to talk about the upcoming Life on Fire event. So break this down for us, brother. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. My goodness. It's our annual event. I'm like a little kid in a candy store just thinking about it. So um, every time we do uh, our Life on Fire event, we look to just one-up ourselves and go bigger and bigger. So it's December um, 6, 7, 8. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We're going to be bringing in this incredibly handsome, very gifted <laughs> speaker. He's known as one of the top podcasters in the world. Boom. Huge heart. Um, guy by the name of John Lee Dumas. I think you might know him. Yes. Yeah. So uh, it's really cool. It's it's really special that uh, the Life on Fire event, the whole thing is about, um, again, being very clear and specific on your life vision. So we touch on the what makes us unique is it's business is a very big vocal point focal point. We're coming in, we're talking about business and strategy, about building your platform. It's about personal brand and growing your influence and being a leader and, you know, building out that legacy of your life. And so we are very focused on downloading systems and tools and how you can, you know, grow audience, build your platform and make a lot more money. So part of living your life on fire is making a lot more money so that you can be a blessing to other people. But in addition, it's like, in vision, we're going to teach on health, wealth, love, and you know faith. And so, what's cool is it's full circle. And the biggest aspect is, and I remember John. John loves to yeah. <laughs> we do we do a board break, walk I was on glass. Just going to bring it up, yeah. And you know, it, and it's it's one of these things where people say, "Yeah, hey, I've done a board break," not the way that we do it. And what's cool is we're going to get you so clear on these things getting in the way, like those parachutes I was talking about, where you have this peak emotional experience where you leave and it feels like freedom. It feels like freedom. You've got a clear plan of attack and then you're literally implementing. And what I care about is results. So this isn't an event where you just come and you sit and people are just talking at you and pitching everything. This is like, this is results. It's success stories. It's results. It's changing people's lives, changing the world. That is my stance with Life on Fire. I have no desire to just put people in a room and have a lot of fun. It's about having fun, breakthrough, and getting results. And John, gosh, you and those board breaks. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Fire Nation, this will be my fourth Life on Fire event. And I can't wait because it's actually going to be my only time back in San Diego in the remainder of 2018 and then all of 2019. I just have other commitments, so I'm not going to make it back to the West Coast during that time. And I don't do many events at all. In fact, I only have one other event on my entire calendar. Um, and that's not till March of 2019. And that's in Orlando. So um, I want to see you, Fire Nation. I want to see you at this event. This will be my fourth time at this event because it's amazing. And Nick, you brought up the boards a couple of times. The last time I was there, I actually broke through two boards at once. And I have picture proof of that in Fire Nation. It was such an emotional and moving event. I just loved every single part of it. And this is, again, December 6th, 7th, and 8th. And if you, Fire Nation, visit lifeonfireevent.com slash JLD, Nick, you got something special for action takers. I do. I do. And um, and it's it's been so amazing. Like, you know, John, you've, you had me on uh, EO Fire in the past. And when I when we've put on these events and being able to meet Fire Nation, it is it has been incredible. I mean, some of my close friends, like Mark Costas, as a result of just Ryan uh, and just Katie, Fire yeah, Ryan and Katie, like it's just it's just people who I love being around, and it just the values are aligned, and and so I'm just really excited for you to be there and um, to have Fire Nation there uh, to do this thing together. And so I wanted to make it 
awesome and easy. So uh, 50 tickets, the first 50 tickets uh, are going to be completely 100% free for Fire Nation. I want to hook up Fire Nation. I love Fire Nation. I am in Fire Nation, <laughs> and we want to see you and hang with us and do lunch and all kinds of cool stuff. Fire Nation, get out there. I mean, again, it's going to be just a blast. You are going to be able to attend this uh, this event for free because you're listening to this podcast right now, and you are an action taker. So if you live up in Sacramento, if you're in Arizona, or wherever you are in the world, and you realize that going to this event for free is just worth your time, your energy, your effort of getting out to San Diego and making this happen December 6th, 7th, and 8th, head over to lifeonfireevent.com slash JLD. The first 50 tickets are free. And I can tell you, Fire Nation, if you don't make the top 50, Nick's still going to have an amazing deal and opportunity for those people that don't make the first 50. And it'll still be more than worth it. I promise you, I'm going to be there all three days, completely involved all three days. We're going to be doing some unbelievable things through this entire event. I told Nick, like he's going to think that I'm co-running the event with him. I'm going to be there so much. It's going to be insane. So I am not just coming in for like a 25 minute talk. I'm there for three days. I will be sitting next to you. I might even be sitting in some of your laps. Like that's how amazing this event's going to be. It's going to be incredible. So life on fireevent.com slash JLD. And Nick, we only have a couple minutes left, but we also do have another awesome resource because we get at Fire Nation. Not everybody that's listening. I know some of you are in, are in Australia, you're in London, you're in India, you're in Pakistan, wherever you are in the world, we have something awesome for you right here too. So tell us about this other resource, Nick. What happens is that when you're living your life on fire, when you um, create success in your life, it is an amazing gift to be able to share that with other people. So one of these, so one thing that we do with Life on Fire is we certify coaches and we train coaches. And it's like once you've learned something that's changed your life, it's so empowering and amazing to share it with other people. So, um, so I love everything about teaching and training and certifying people to become coaches and do that as a career, part time or full time. So uh, what I'm excited to offer to Fire Nation also completely 100% for free, is my greatest resource, which is coachingbusinessa2z.com. And what that means is just like it says, it's how to build a coaching business from A to Z. So I'm including proposal templates, I'm including contracts, and I'm including what do you do to go from starting a coaching business to your first five clients in 30 days, and how to build a coaching business that you love, that gets results for your clients, that makes a huge impact. And uh, and so that's completely for free, that training and all those resources. And I'm hooking up the Fire Nation. Ooh, I love that. So Fire Nation, as always, there'll be links in the show notes. But one more time, that URL is coachingbusinessa2z.com. And it's free. So check it out. And Nick, one takeaway, if there's just one thing you want to make sure Fire Nation walks away with from this amazing audio masterclass, what is it? So the number one takeaway out of all of this is if you ask yourself, what would I do if I won the lottery today? If it's not what you're currently doing, then you owe it to yourself to invest in yourself. Get to an event, mine or somebody else's. Invest in yourself Spend the time, maybe the money, the energy to figure out what is that God-given assignment or what is that calling upon your life, that vision that will make you happy throughout the day that's joy on the inside that literally would be something that whether you were getting paid or not, you would love to do that. So if that if that isn't clear or if you won the lottery today and what you're doing is not what you would be doing, well, then spend the time, invest the time to figure that out. That's what I'm here to do on this earth to help you with. We'll support you with the resources, but get that clear and everything else will fall into place. Fire Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And today, guess what? You've been hanging out with NU and JLD today. So keep up the heat. The Fire Brothers have been providing the heat. And of course, the final call to action is number one, get over to lifeonfireevent.com slash JLD. Be an action taker. Be one of the first 50 Fire Nation. And if and when you are, by the way, email me, john at eofire.com. I want to know that you're one of the, the first 50. I want to congratulate you. And I want to say, see you in San Diego. And if, by the way, you're out of the top 50 and you still are going to come because it's going to be amazing and 
unbelievably worth it. Still email me as well because I want to give you a big thumbs up too. And again, that's December 6th, 7th, and 8th. And for those people that just can't make it for some unknown reason, coachingbusinessa2z.com. Get over to that resource, make it happen. Nick, thank you for sharing your truth with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you, brother, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Boom. All right, Fire Nation, hope you enjoyed our chat with Nick today. And that's just the only call to action I have for you, Fire Nation. Get to San Diego, get to that event. I can't wait to give you a high five. I can't wait to break a board with you. I can't wait to cheers you on a toast when you've had a big breakthrough in your life. Lifeonfireevent.com slash JLD. These tickets are free if you're one of the first 50. Make it there. Let me know about it. I can't wait to hang out and I'll see you there. Successful businesses rely on quality people because quality people will help your business scale and grow, but finding the right people can be tough. That's why I love Zip Recruiter. Its powerful technology scans thousands of resumes to identify people with the right skills and experience, and then actively invites them to apply for your job. That means you get quality candidates fast. And right now you can try Zip Recruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to ziprecruiter.com slash fire. That's ziprecruiter.com slash fire. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire.